Hey, this is Joe, and today let's talk about matrix multiplication. The examples that we're going to use in this video are both going to be using matrix A and matrix B here. It's important to note that the order in which we multiply our matrices is very important in matrix multiplication. This is because in matrix multiplication, matrix A times matrix B does not have to equal matrix B times matrix A. Also, it's important to understand what the result is going to be when I multiply two matrices. And to figure out what our result's going to be, we have to understand the order of both of our matrices first. And recall that the order of a matrix is your number of rows by your number of columns. Since A has two rows and it has three columns, the order of matrix A is going to be two by three, my rows by my columns. Similarly here, matrix B has three rows and it has two columns, so the order of matrix B is three by two. To then determine the order of matrix A times matrix B, we just write out their order side by side. So the order of matrix A is two by three, the order of matrix B is three by two. Notice these threes, the columns of matrix A and the rows of matrix B agree here, right? They're both three. And whenever you're doing matrix multiplications, these interior numbers have to agree. Since we can multiply these matrices, since these interior numbers agree, the resulting matrix is actually going to have order of the outside numbers. So the order of matrix A times matrix B is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. Similarly, if we wanted to multiply matrix B by matrix A, we would first line up their orders, so it would be 3 by 2, and then 2 by 3. The interior numbers match, so we can multiply. And so the outside numbers, 3 by 3, is going to be the order of this product. Notice that matrix AB has order 2, 2, and then matrix BA has order 3, 3. So it's fairly obvious that AB won't equal BA here, since the matrix result when we multiply is not the same size. So why don't we go ahead and multiply matrix A times matrix B? So how does this 2 by 3 matrix times this 3 by 2 matrix result in a 2 by 2 matrix? Well, that has to do with how we actually multiply within matrix multiplication. What we do is we take rows from our first matrix and multiply it by columns of our second matrix. And I'll show you how we do that. Say we wanted to find the value that's in row one, column one of our result. What we would do is we would take the first row in matrix A, two, five, one, and we'd multiply it by the first column in matrix B, negative four, one, five. And the way we then multiply this row by the column is we match up the first values and multiply them together, and then add the second values multiplied together, and then we add the third values multiplied together. So this row times this column is going to equal 2 times negative 4 plus 5 times 1 plus 1 times 5, which is equal to negative 8 plus 5 plus 5, which equals 2. So the value that goes in the first row and first column of our result is going to be 2. So let's move to the next position, the position that's in row 1, column 2 of our result. And to find this value, we're going to then multiply row 1 from matrix A times column 2 from matrix B. So we have row 251 times column 20, negative 3. We then just multiply. We get 2 times 2 plus 5 times 0 plus 1 times negative 3, which equals 4 plus 0 minus 3, which equals 1. So 1's going to go in position 1, 2 of our result. Now let's move to the second row. Let's find the value that's going to be in the second row first column of our result. This time, we're going to use row 2 from matrix A. And we determine this by the row number in the result that we're finding will be the row that we use in matrix A. So since we're in the second row in our result, we're going to use the second row in matrix A to find this product. This is also the same logic for columns. The column I have in my result is the column that I use within matrix B here. So we're going to multiply row negative 1, 7, 2 by column negative 4, 1, 5. This gives us negative 1 times negative 4 plus 7 times 1 plus 2 times 5, which equals 4 plus 7 plus 10, which equals 21. 
So 21 is going to go in row 2, column 1 of our result. Finally, to find the last value of our matrix, which is in row 2, column 2, we're going to use row 2 from matrix A times column 2 from matrix B. That is, we're going to multiply negative 1, 7, 2 by 2, 0, negative 3, which gives us negative 1 times 2 plus 7 times 0 plus 2 times negative 3, which equals negative 2 plus 0 minus 6, which equals negative 8. And so negative 8 goes in position 2, 2 of our result. And so now we found the matrix we get when we multiply matrix A times matrix B. We get this matrix over here, matrix 2, 1, 21, negative 8. Now let's switch the order of A and B and see what we get when we multiply that way. Remember, the result is based on the orders of the matrices that we're multiplying. Matrix B is 3 by 2. Matrix A is 2 by 3. So when we have them in this order, we have 3 by 2 times 2 by 3. The interior numbers match, so that's good. We can multiply. And then the exterior numbers tell us the order of our result. So our final matrix that we get when we multiply B by A is going to be a 3 by 3 matrix here. Which is kind of interesting when you think about it. When you multiply matrices, your result may end up being bigger than the matrices that you're multiplying in the first place. So you've got to kind of take some time to learn the ins and outs of matrix multiplication. But the process to multiply matrix B times matrix A is going to be exactly the same here. If we let our result matrix be matrix C, then I'm going to have nine times I have to multiply a row times a column. And so I get this generic matrix here for C. And the reason I put these kind of placeholder C values here is the index numbers for all of these C's kind of tells us what row and what column we multiply together to get this value. In other words, if I look at C11, the value that's in a row one column one of our result, the indices tell us which row and column we use. The first number tells us the row from the left matrix we use, and the second number tells us the column from the second matrix that we use. And it's important to note that these indices just represent the position of each of these C values, right? So C11 is associated with the C value that's in the first row and the first column of our matrix C. Or say C23 represents the C value that's in row 2, column 3 of my matrix C. So that's where these indices come from. So to find C11, I multiply row 1 of my first matrix times column 1 of my second matrix, which is then going to be row negative 4, 2 times column 2, negative 1, which equals negative 4 times 2 plus 2 times negative 1, which is equal to negative 8 minus 2, which equals negative 10. So C11 is equal to negative 10. If I wanted to find C12 now, I'm going to use row 1 of my first matrix times column 2 of my second matrix. So we're going to multiply negative 4, 2 times 5, 7, which gives us negative 4 times 5 plus 2 times 7, which equals negative 20 plus 14, which equals negative 6. So C12 is negative 6. Now, let's say we wanted to find C32 down here. Let's say we just jump out of order. This would end up using what? We would use the third row from our first matrix times the second column of our second matrix. So we are then multiplying 5, negative 3 times 5, 7. This equals 5 times 5 plus negative 3 times 7, which equals 25 minus 21, which equals 4. So 4 is going to go in position C, 3, 2. And so really, if you think about it, we can kind of jump to any of these values and know which row and column we're going to use from our two matrices. You can use these indices as a guide. So C13 is going to use row 1 from our first matrix times column 3 of our second matrix. And when we do that multiplication, we get 0. C21 is going to use row 2 from our first matrix times column 1 of our second matrix, which gives us 2. C22 is going to use row 2 from my first matrix times column 2 from my second matrix, and that's going to give me 5. C23 is going to use row 2 from our first matrix times column 3 of our second matrix, which is then going to give us 1. For C31, we use row 3 from our first matrix times column 1 of our second matrix, which gives us 13. 
finally C33, we're going to use row 3 of our first matrix times column 3 of our second matrix, and we're going to get negative 1. And so it's kind of just important that the position that you're in with your result kind of tells you what row and column you use whenever you're doing this multiplication. So before we're done, let's just answer a few more questions without kind of multiplying out the whole matrix now that we have that process down. Say I have a new matrix A and a new matrix B shown here. What is the order of matrix A? Well, the order is your rows by columns, so that's going to be 2 by 2 of matrix A. And the order of matrix B is going to be rows by columns, which is 2 by 3. Can I multiply AB? In other words, can I multiply a 2 by 2 matrix by a 2 by 3 matrix? And the answer is yes. My columns in my first matrix has to equal my rows in the second matrix. So I can multiply a 2 by 2 by a 2 by 3. Can I multiply matrix B times matrix A? Well, that's going to be a 2 by 3 matrix times a 2 by 2 matrix. Notice my interior numbers don't match here, so I cannot multiply B times A here. So let's just talk a little more about matrix A times matrix B, since we know that we can multiply those two. If matrix A times matrix B equals matrix C, what is the order of matrix C? The order of the matrix we get when we multiply two matrices together is going to be equal to these outside numbers. So the order of C is going to be a 2 by 3 matrix. It's going to have two rows and three columns. Knowing that matrix C is 2 by 3, can we find the value that's going to be in position 2, 3 of our matrix? The value that's in the second row and third column of matrix C? Well, yeah, we just use the rows and columns of that position to tell us which row and column we take from A and B when we're multiplying. So to find the value that's in C23, we're going to use row 2 from matrix A and multiply it by column 3 of matrix B, which is going to be row 3, 4 times column 4, 7, which is equal to 3 times 4 plus 4 times 7, which equals 12 plus 28, which equals 40. So C23 equals 40. So hopefully this makes matrix multiplication a little bit easier for you. I'm Joe, and thanks for spending some time with me.